Welcome back to Catching Your Breath, the podcast. I'm Steve Austin, and I'm so glad you're here. The sound quality is probably not exactly what you're used to, and I apologize for that. I am in a hotel for the next few days. I'm working on my next book, and I didn't think to bring my podcasting setup. But it is a few days past time for a new episode and doing all the reading and the writing that I'm doing. I just really got inspired uh, and I want to share with you about this new course I've just released. And so hopefully the sound quality is good enough that you'll stick around. I sure hope so. Um, Because here's what I know. If you're living with heartache If you have survived trauma, if you've been betrayed, the next half an hour or so can really be a launching pad toward the start of your healing journey. So this episode is going to serve as sort of an introduction to this brand new free course I've just released called How to Heal Your Hurts. And it's a seven-day e-course that I hope that you will sign up for. All you have to do is go to catchingyourbreath.com today and you can sign up for uh, how to heal your hurts. So why does this matter to me? I think it matters because through my years of ministry, uh, in the last several years of recovering from a suicide attempt, doing my work as a life coach, I've learned one really valuable truth, and it's this. We are all recovering from something. Now, I know I've mentioned on social media to you a few times that I'm working on a new book to help churches learn how to cultivate vulnerability in safe community. And for part of the research for the book, I've posted this survey online where you can go, uh, even now, and share your story. And uh, I'll put the link in the show notes here. So wherever you're listening, if you look at the show description or the show notes, whatever it says there, um, you'll see the link for the, the Google form, the survey for the new book. The stories that I've received so far, there are 75 of them, so I've got room for 25 more. I'd love to have 100 total, but these stories are crushing. They're heartbreaking, but they're also, most of them, full of really great insight for church leaders or anybody else who wants to learn how to help people heal. So listen to this story from my friend Steve. I was a young gay man who'd been brought up inside the church. The shame and guilt that I felt was immense. I became a people pleaser because I hated myself so much. I put others first and put myself last. The church made me feel as if I ought to be ashamed of who I am. I felt so utterly ashamed of my existence. I came out to my pastor and he was fine with me being gay but the church had certain policies that discriminated against me. I was told that the church wouldn't change its policies to accommodate me. I knew that I had to find another church to attend. I became very depressed, and I felt vulnerable and alone. It made me feel ashamed, fearful, guilty, and there's that word again, alone. I couldn't confide in anyone because they all felt the same about me. The church suddenly became an exclusive club, and I had just become excluded. Or there's the story of Jill, who was raped and then not believed by her church. There's the story from Julie, whose husband was hooked on porn and eventually cheated on her. Or there's a similar story from my friend Michaela, whose story of surviving her husband's affair is actually on the blog this week at catchingyourbreath.com. There's also this anonymous entry from someone who simply said, I just want to feel like I matter. And don't we all? Don't we all just want to feel like our story matters? 
like our pain matters, like recovery matters, like the wounds and the scars and all the hard work we're doing just to stay alive matters. I want to share a couple of my own stories with you. And this first one um, might seem a little out in left field at first, but it really hurt. I had this best friend who was just literally as close as a brother. I was crazy about this guy. Our families had supper together at least once a week. We vacationed together. We talked and texted every single day. They were a part of our family, and we absolutely adored them. But after the suicide attempt, I had to rethink everything. Everything I knew about religion, everything I knew about politics, basically everything I knew about people. Long story short, I became this bleeding heart liberal that you know today who is completely affirming of the LGBTQ community and believes that everyone from every walk of life deserves a space at God's table. That everyone belongs. That there is no other. There is only us. Well, in the Deep South, (laughs) where I live in the buckle of the Bible Belt, those views are less than popular. So one day, this best friend of mine, this brother, invited me to Starbucks for breakfast. And immediately, in my gut, I knew something was wrong. So he shows up with this massive leather King James Bible under his arm, and I knew this was really bad. Dude actually said the words, Thus saith the Lord. He said, Thus saith the Lord, your views on homosexuality are leading thousands astray, and their blood is on your hands. Repent, saith the Lord. And then, of course, he goes on to quote the seven clobber passages that people love to quote when using their religion as some sort of weapon to exclude other people. And he tried to get into a debate with me, and that's when I just shut it down. I paid for our breakfast, and I told him how much I love him. But that after nearly tasting death, after knowing what hopelessness and loneliness and despair feel like, I can no longer judge another human being. I can no longer be the cause for someone else feeling hopeless and alone and unloved, unseen, unheard, uncared for. All I can do today is love. And then I never heard from him again. So it was incredibly painful. And I've thought about that friend nearly every day for the last five years. But I refuse to be included based on who I exclude. To me, that sounds nothing like the message of Jesus. And then one more. The most painful phone call of my life happened while I was still in ICU. I was still recovering from this suicide attempt. It was before I was transferred to the psych ward. And it's the day my parents told me they weren't coming to see me. And you know, We haven't agreed on religion or politics in a long time. We don't see eye to eye on plenty of things. But all that being said, you know there are still just those times when you you just want your mama? So that one, it gutted me, to say the least. I have never felt less seen or heard or understood. But as bad as it hurt, as bad as it still hurts, I don't think I'd change it. And here's why. Because I couldn't hide anymore. I can't hide 
anymore. I hid my depression. I hid the anxiety. I hid the abuse. I hid the PTSD for nearly three decades. And the shame of all those things nearly killed me. So for me, the permission, the courage to tell my story sometimes pushes other people away. But I refuse to hide my story just to make someone else feel comfortable. I think that's what Brene Brown talks about. She, she talks about the difference in belonging and fitting in. And so if I'm constantly trying to change myself to fit your mold, to live up to your unrealistic expectations of me, to make you happy, that's fitting in. But I don't want to fit in. I want to belong. I want to be loved and embraced and accepted and even celebrated as I am. I don't want to perform anymore. That kind of life is exhausting. So, why did I create this course? Because sometimes people are overwhelmed. They're suffering the shameful lashings of their past. They're holding on to these gut-wrenching memories. And they're unable to catch their breath. Why? Because the world keeps telling us to just keep pushing. And if the pressure of fear, pain, anxiety, anger, if all that continues to simmer and grow, sooner or later, we explode. Or maybe it's better said we implode. So that's exactly why I've created this really simple seven-day email course. Whether you've made some really poor decisions that have blown up in your face, or maybe you've been wounded deeply by someone else, I wrote this course with you in mind. Psalm 56, 8 says, You've kept track of my every toss and turn through the sleepless nights. Each tear entered into your ledger, each ache written in your book. Isaiah 61 promises they'll rebuild the old ruins, raise a new city out of the wreckage. They'll start over on the ruined cities, take the rubble left behind and make it new. But how? How do those ruins get rebuilt? How do we create a new life from the wreckage? Especially when you feel buried beneath all that rubble, What's the first step? I'll tell you in just about 30 seconds. So friend, really quick, this episode really just scratches the surface of what it means to start to heal. And for some people, honestly, this may not be enough. So I want to take just a moment to tell you that if you feel like you need professional help to work through some of your triggers, really good news. Right now, you can save 10% when you sign up for therapy right from your smartphone using BetterHelp. So I use BetterHelp every single day. I love my counselor. Her name is Brooke. The constant feedback that she provides me is so helpful. I can connect with her 24-7 via text, phone, or video. And you can do the very same thing all from your smartphone. So the link is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com forward slash catching your breath. You can save 10% on your first month of easy, affordable, convenient, and confidential therapy by going to betterhelp.com slash catching your breath today. The link will also be in the show notes wherever you're listening to this podcast. Okay, let's get back into the episode. (laughs) 
So when it feels like you're drowning, if you're drowning in emotional pain, if you're drowning in mental anguish, if you're drowning beneath loads of despair and heartache and betrayal, what's the first step to take? I think it's learning to let go. So I want to give you 10 ways, 10 ideas that you can try in order to let go of your pain. Some of these are going to work for you. Some of them may not, and that's okay. So the first step is to learn to accept that life is what it is. What do I mean? Even if you don't have the life that you want right now, there's nothing else to do but keep putting one foot in front of the other and embrace where you are. Embrace it. So before you can let go of the pain, you first have to accept it. Admit that it's there. Identify, I am hurting. I've been hurt by fill in the blank. You have to first accept it, acknowledge it, admit it, embrace it. Second thing, learn to create boundaries. So this is probably the biggest lesson I learned in recovery from a suicide attempt is what the heck boundaries even are. I had no idea at 29 years old, coming out of a psych ward, what boundaries meant. So I had to learn what they were. I had to learn how to set clear barriers around myself to keep out the negativity. And you have to do the same thing. You have to tell others, teach others what you need and how you need for them to respect your space and your process. Don't take on more than you can handle. Number three, identify your safe people. So who are those inner circle trusted friends who will lift you up with love and support? Make a list. Number four, identify the people who are not safe for you. So I think this is just as important as number three. Know who your safe people are and also know who your safe people aren't. <laughs> Who's not safe? The fifth thing, you can't focus on healing 24-7. So you have to take breaks. Recovery is really hard work. And my friend Kate Piper says it very well. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So you got to take breaks. Give yourself permission to enjoy your life as it is today, right now. You can't always be focused on what's next or what you think your life should be like. Take a break, take a breath, show yourself some grace. The sixth way that you can try to let go is learning to forgive the people who have wronged you. Look, it's really hard to fill your life with good things if you're holding on to all this anger, all this sorrow. All that unforgiveness does is clouds your mind and brings you down. So you have to start learning to forgive. And sometimes that's a really long process. Paul Young, my dear friend, talks about how it took him 50 years to wipe his dad's face off of the image of God. 50 years. So it's a process. It's not overnight, but you got to start somewhere. Number seven, learn to put yourself first. So this one includes some of the things we've already talked about. It includes boundaries. It includes safe people. It also means that you need to practice radical self-care. And radical self-care is actually basic, okay? Get enough sleep. Drink lots of water. If you're drinking enough or you think you are, you're probably not. Cut down on alcohol and caffeine. I'm not saying cut either one of them out. If you need to cut them out, you know that. But cut them down. Uh... Alcohol makes my depression much worse. Too much caffeine makes my anxiety so much worse. Eat your veggies. Take naps. Practice self-care. Uh, the eighth thing to do is learn to ask for help. So you have identified your safe people. Now it's time to let them into your story. When you feel ready, when it's appropriate, and sometimes that takes a little push, Sometimes, like, you may not ever feel ready, but push yourself just a little bit and tell them about your struggles. 
ask them for what you need. So similar to creating boundaries with your safe people, you're also going to want to tell them what you need, explain it to them, teach them. This is what I'm dealing with. Here's what I need from you. Number nine, this one's a biggie. Ask yourself, what am I tolerating? So there are things that you're celebrating. There are things that you're embracing. And then there are things in your life that you're just tolerating. So maybe you're tolerating a friend or an acquaintance. Maybe you're tolerating a coworker, or maybe it's your job. You might be tolerating some critical neighbor who never has anything nice to say. You could be tolerating your health, but not doing anything to help yourself. So once you've identified those things that you're tolerating, which are almost always weighing you down in some way, then start by eliminating one thing at a time. Just one. And then the tenth suggestion I have for letting go is learn to speak the truth. Okay? Tell the truth. Be kind to other people when you tell the truth. Uh, you don't have to expect anything in return. But also expect respect from other people. Okay, before I let you go, I want to share my Survivor's Manifesto with you. If you want to download this and print it out, uh, I had someone, a professional designer, uh, turn this into a really beautiful printable. If you want to download the printable, you can go to the shop uh, at catchingyourbreath.com. But I want to give it to you here right now as a thank you for listening to this episode. And before I share this with you, I want to invite you to breathe with me. Look, I, there are certain breathing techniques that are triggering for some people, just depending on their trauma. So if breathing techniques aren't safe for you, skip this part. Now, I want to invite you to take three slow, deep breaths with me. So we're going to breathe in through the nose, and we're going to count to four. We're going to hold our breath for four, and then we're going to release our breath on four. All right, let's breathe together. And if you want to close your eyes, you can. Here we go. Breathe in through the nose. One, two, three, four. Now hold your breath. Two, three, four. And exhale. Two, three, four. Okay, let's do that again. You're going to breathe in through the nose for one, two, three, four. Hold your breath. Two, three, four, and exhale. Two, three, four. One more time. You should be starting to relax a little. Feel your shoulders drop a little bit. We're going to breathe together one more time. In through the nose. Two, three, four. Hold it. Two, three, four, and exhale. Two, three, four. Oh, you did a great job. Okay, so let your breath just return to its natural rhythm and use this as a prayer, an affirmation, whatever you need it to be. But this is my Survivor's Manifesto. I deserve safety, love, and belonging. I am not defined by what happened to me. Labels belong on products, not people. I don't need others to fix me. I am free to find healing, not just escape. I choose who I let into my deep spaces. I will not sacrifice my truth to make others feel better. I refuse to let my wounds be a cause or an excuse for addiction. I will respect 
the recovery process by not picking at my scabs. I don't have to live inside the identity of a person who was wronged forever. Moving forward is not the same as saying nothing bad happened. I will find a balance between building walls and setting boundaries. Saving a life requires more than just tidying up. I will not sweep my issues under the rug any longer. I am still here. Still standing. My heart may be scarred, but it still beats. I am a survivor. Friend, I want to thank you for being here today. As a reminder, you can sign up for the seven-day How to Heal Your Hurts course by going to catchingyourbreath.com right now. It's absolutely free. And would you do me a massive favor? If you find this podcast helpful, would you please share it with your friends and leave a review on iTunes? We only have 12 reviews so far, which is great. I'm thankful for all of them. But those reviews, the more we get, the better reviews we get. It really makes a huge difference in getting this show in front of the people who need it, getting this show the attention it deserves. And finally, if you really love this show, would you consider supporting my work on Patreon? You can go to patreon.com slash I am Steve Austin. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash I am Steve Austin to get signed up. There are all sorts of really cool rewards, including joining our private Facebook community, getting early access to my new books, and reduced coaching rates if you'd like to have a call with me once a month. You can get all that and more and support this work by going to patreon.com forward slash I am Steve Austin. Until next time, my friend, remember that your life matters. Be really kind to yourself. See ya.